So I've never been onto an aircraft carrier before. Nope. And this thing is incredible in size. <laughs> Seeing pictures of it online, you think, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big boat, but holy smokes. We're staying at Laguna Shore Village in Corpus Christi, Texas, because we're here to see the USS Lexington. And this is a really nice RV park. Um, the RVs are really close together, but even so, it's been really quiet. And I don't know, for, pretty good for the most part. There's free coffee, you know, laundry. Uh, well, the, what else they got here? Laundry's not free. Well, the laundry's not free, but the coffee's free, so. Coffee's free. Yeah. Uh, they have a lounge, clubhouse, some reading material, cats you can pet. <laughs> yeah, they've got three cats, yeah. and the owners are really nice. So nice. Yeah, when we first got here, the owner showed us where our site was, and as soon as she saw Sweetie in the truck, she was just like, oh, can I pet the puppy? And we're <laughs> like, yeah, of course, she loves people. And so she just stuck her hands right in the truck and just started petting Sweetie, and Sweetie even jumped into the front seat to get, to get at her and just start licking her and everything. And yeah, the, the owners are really nice here. But we're only staying here for another night too, because all we were here was to see the USS Lexington, and then we're on our way to San Antonio. And Jenny has been trying to find us an affordable RV park all morning today because we can't find any free camping around major cities. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. So we, can't, we haven't found anything for San Antonio. And we're actually having a really hard time finding an, an affordable RV park we can even stay in because like all the parks that Jenny has called don't allow dangerous dog breeds. Sweetie's a Rottweiler, so she's on the list for like all those. And... That's really upsetting for us because we know we've raised our dog right. And when people say we don't allow y your dog breed because she's dangerous, you know, that's a dangerous breed. I mean, we, we almost take offense to that because- no, we take serious offense to that. Yeah, it's, we, we've made a term for it. It's doggy discrimination, you yeah. know? And, and it really is. People are being prejudiced against certain dog breeds just because they're that breed. Like they won't even do like an individual, like they don't judge a dog by the individual because as soon as they would meet Sweetie, they would know that she is the embodiment of that name. She is just a huge cuddler, lover. She's, she's just an all around excellent dog. She loves everyone loves people, loves kids, loves, loves other dogs. dogs. Yeah. And, and cats and rabbits. <laughs> she just loves life. And it, it, it's just, I don't know. It's really, it's really offensive and annoying to us when people's like, people say, oh, we don't, we don't allow that breed. It's gotten to the point where when I call an RV park, double checking some of the things that I'm finding online about them, whether it be their rates or if they allow pets, I have to ask them, do you allow, all breeds or just specific breeds and to us that's I don't know that's really offensive because she's a member of our family and like some of you your dogs are probably members of your family too and she's like a daughter to us she's she's our baby oh dang it Aww. this is I know I know see she's just a big lover yeah I love you too. <laughs> How could you not allow this at your RV park? I mean, I understand, like, that, I don't know, sometimes they're forced into it because of insurance companies, like, don't allow. It's like they do it for insurance reasons and liability reasons. So they may be forced to it. But it's just unfortunate that people can be that way, you know, and just prejudge, you know, just make a blanket, uh, you know, a blanket observation for all members of a certain type and discriminate against them for that reason. When the individual could be just, I don't know, the best type of dog. So, you know, it's unfortunate that people can be that way, but that's how it is. But we're here. 
and this RV park does allow all dog breeds, thankfully, so Sweetie can be here. And while we're here, we're going to have a great time exploring the USS Lexington, so we're going to get to that. Sorry, doggy. We got to leave you home. Sweetie, we got to leave you home. You can't go on a you can't go on an aircraft carrier with us. She looks so upset. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pup. All right. Give daddy kisses. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me oh, give me kisses. No, that's your butt. No, why? Why did I say give me kisses? She went for the butt. Because you're a butt. I'm not a butt. <laughs> I am not. I'm not the butt. <laughs> So I've never been onto an aircraft carrier before, nope. and this thing is incredible in size. <laughs> Seeing pictures of it online, you think, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big boat, but holy smokes, I can only imagine the history surrounding this vessel, and I'm pretty excited to learn about it. War history is always cool to hear. I don't know why, it's just, it's just interesting. So all these planes that are on the flight deck of the Lexington have all been restored. And what's actually really neat is this A6E intruder right behind me, they're restoring it right on the flight deck. So the flight deck for the Lexington is basically just a museum displaying planes used in battle and for training just throughout history not only for World War II planes, because I'm pretty sure they didn't fly this in World War II. <laughs> again. <laughs> this thing is awesome. Look at this. <laughs> it's really cool that they allow us to get on those guns, move them, operate them, play around with them. The sounds that you heard, I didn't add those in. That was, there's a little pedal that you push and it makes those firing sounds. I cannot imagine being the ones that had to man these huge, awesome, terrifying guns and had to actually shoot them at incoming planes during war. Just sitting in that seat, I don't know, you, you kind of get a feel for it and even though it was a lot of fun playing on the guns, it afterwards you kind of sit and think that, wow, these were actually used in war. I'm actually sitting where someone sat during war. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, 
a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I ask the Congress to declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Sleep on. Which is not good. No way, this is way worse. Our dinette has more room than this. No, I mean the comfort. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's crazy when you walk down the stairs or you walk upstairs to a roped off section and they don't have any of the lights on. This one has some lights on, but it's still creepy when you look farther and it's just dark. <laughs> it's really creepy. <laughs> This is not fair. <laughs> no, this isn't fair. We've had cereal and peanut butter and jellies today. And even though the food behind us is plastic, it is still making us incredibly hungry. <laughs> is it food time yet? <laughs> It'll be food time when we get home. I cannot wait. Really? I'm glad they cleared that one up. I almost mailed a letter. Well, the ship museum closes at five, so they basically kicked us out. <laughs> but it was a really cool experience. It, we're learning the history of the ship and just the history of World War II and Pearl Harbor also was just really cool. And the ship is really amazing. It's, it has everything it needs to be out at water for a long time. They've got, you know, basically everything, all the services that the um, crew would need, you know, dental. A hospital, post office, everything. And it's pretty cool. It's a just a floating city, basically. Yeah, it's basically a floating city. <laughs> and what's really cool about the ship is that the Japanese uh, had nicknamed it the Blue Ghost because it was kind of blue in color and ghost because it was reported to be sunk four times, but it never actually sunk. They just thought they got it four times. <laughs> it was, uh, I know at one point it was hit with a torpedo and at another point uh, a 
Japanese kamikaze struck the bridge of the ship. So they thought they got it four times, but they never got it. Nope. <laughs> Walking out on that jetty was pretty cool. You get to see the Lexington from the front angle, and it's really the only way to see it, you know, from that angle. Walking in, you can see the back of it, but not the front. And a lot of people are using this jetty to fish off of. The one guy caught a puffer fish. I know he's probably not gonna eat that, probably threw it back, but. And then some other people caught some fish they couldn't eat, so they just <laughs> gave them to pelicans. Sorry, I almost knocked you over. <laughs> We had a lot of fun exploring that ship. There is so much to see. We didn't even get to everything. And we were here for four hours. <laughs> it opens at nine, so yeah, if get you're here gonna at come, nine. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna come get here nice and early, and I do recommend you go if you like history at all, especially war history, yes. that thing is well worth going to see. But get there early, because there's a lot to see and a lot of reading to do, and a lot of videos too, so. And wear comfy shoes. Yes. Your feet are killing you, aren't they? Yes, my feet hurt. Mine are fine because I did wear comfy shoes. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want more, go ahead and subscribe because our journey is just beginning. Catch you guys later. Bye.